Bibles with you, can we all stand and go to Romans chapter 8? Romans chapter 8 this morning. As we uh, continue to pray for the Lord to speak to our hearts and our lives. And we need to hear from Him. Can we say amen? We need to hear from the Lord. Uh, Romans chapter 8 this morning. Romans chapter 8. Another epistle, another uh, letter that Paul had written. Uh, to Rome, a specific church, and uh, as you are studying your Bible and you're learning about the Bible, you know, different letters were sent to different churches, and the content was just a little different, but Paul was a church starter, and he would go from place to place, um, not only leading people to, uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ, but helping them to understand spiritual truths, and so uh, it was written in a time in which the Romans ruled, the Romans ruled, the Romans government. They were persecutors of the Jews. They didn't like the Jews. But yet, aren't you glad that God's word is going to prevail no matter what government is in control? Yeah, amen. And you notice that the government of Rome is not in existence like this, but the word of God is still here today. And so, may uh, we read together starting with um, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of the life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteous requirements of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is empty against God, for it is not subject to to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is not in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through, the, through his spirit who dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are not debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of of the body you will live for as many are led by the spirit of God these are the sons of God for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out Abba Father the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God and if children then heirs Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. I'm going to stop right there. God bless the reading of the word. I'm going to preach this morning or speak on the subject of totally depending on the Holy Spirit. Totally depending on the Holy Spirit. Father, this morning we're just so grateful and thankful for your presence and your power. And Lord, again, we need you. Lord, as we open our ears and our hearts, oh God, we pray that we are able to hear and understand what your spirit is speaking to each and every one of us, Lord, individually and corporately. And Father, we desire to be led of your spirit. We desire even this message, Lord. God, lead me, guide me, direct me, Lord. God, that everyone would hear a voice within a voice. And God, that you would just continue to help us to see and understand what you're speaking to us in this day and hour. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are the one as the author of salvation. If there's one who doesn't know you, let him come to know you as Lord and Savior. God, if there's one sick in their body, let him be healed. 
If there's one discouraged, let him be encouraged. Let your word go forth in power. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. And amen. You may be seated this morning. Totally depending on the Holy Spirit. You know, as we're living in this world and everything that is happening in this world, you know, um, <clears throat> one could get very fearful, frustrated, angry, and dispirited in a hurry. Maybe we have some that's in the audience today. We can either think about what the devil is doing or think about what we should be doing. Amen. Depends on what you're thinking about. Uh, we can continue to let the spirit of the Antichrist influence us or allow the Holy Spirit to lead us. You know, the devil and his demonic kingdom has a purpose, has a job. We know, most of us know the story that he's here to steal, kill, and destroy. They have a purpose, the devil, the de demonic forces, the powers and principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places is here to be able to bring destruction. He hates you, he hates me, he hates us with a passion, and he's doing everything that he can to be able to frustrate. He works through people. Jesus called them the children of the devil. And those who don't believe in him and those who reject Christ basically are called the children of the devil. But I'm so glad Jesus wants to turn them to the light. Can we say amen? You know, but we find that, you know, there's a constant, um, you know, uh, buzzing of the ears, if you will. And I'll get to that in just a minute. Last week we talked about the Lord of the fly. You know who the Lord of the fly is, Beelzebub, the Lord of the flies, and how he buzzes in your ears and my ears. Isn't it so distracting when a fly gets in your car or gets in your house? And I don't know about you, but it's hard to stay focused if the fly is not killed, huh? Are, are you wondering how many of you have just about had a wreck trying to kill a bug or a flying insect? You know, just get your attention and you're just so frustrated. You're not thinking about what you need to be thinking about sometimes. Hey, we got two fly swatters at our house. One his and hers. It depends on what the fly is. Hey, it looks like a female. Go get it, Rhonda. But uh, in, in, anyway, you know, the, the enemy is there to aggravate you, frustrate you, hinder, dominate, dominate your thinking process and anger you. And that's what the prince of the power of the air is doing now around the world. Amen. You know, with all of the things that is happening and the frustration and aggravation. And it's like, oh, gosh, oh, God. You know, how many of you know the devil likes to flex his muscles and he's got a voice and he wants to act like that he's in control. But how many of you know he's not in control? Amen. But yet to frustrate you and aggravate you and to dominate our lives. You know, and, and there's so much angrier, anger and frustration out there. People's having to make decisions of what to do, what not to do, and, 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 and just say, okay, Lord, uh, we, we need you to help us. You know, so, you know, it's, it's what you're focusing on, and it's what the enemy wants you to focus on, you know, versus what the Lord would have you to focus on, because what you focus on is going to dominate you. Can I get an amen? What you focus on. And if you're focusing upon everything that the enemy is doing and all of this stuff, and you're just, you're going to have frustration. You're going to be like that balloon. It's just going to, you're just going to be more and more hot air until <laughs> you're going to burst. <laughs> and when you burst, it's not going to be pretty. Can we say amen? amen. Maybe some of you have already burst your bubble. But anyway, and may the Lord help us to stay focused upon what we need to stay focused upon. And that's who we are. Thank you for that song. You know, I know who I am. Amen. I am who he says I am. Isn't that an awesome song? You know, I am who he says I am. You got to stay focused upon who you are. You know, last week the Lord had laid upon my heart to be able to speak about, you know, dead flies. And, and, and I give you a little bit of revelation out of that chapter in Ecclesiastes. And, and I had the uh, image of the candlestick. And to be able to uh, talk about the imageries and the symbolism that God had established. Things that was concealed, you know, in the Old Testament was revealed in the New Testament. And so there's that candlestick that was, you know, represented fruit and fire. You know, through the oil and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. 
And so I shared with you towards the end of the service is that that was an image of you. That candlestick is an image of you. You know, there should be fruit and there should be fire through the anointing of the Holy Spirit, through the wick of righteousness. And you have to constantly cut the uh, wick and get rid of the ashes because life gives you a lot of ashes. Has anybody been burnt, you know, recently? But yet you have to be able to see the imagery. So you wouldn't have revelation. You wouldn't have understanding of what that candlestick really meant. It gives light in the midst of the darkness. You wouldn't understand what it meant if you didn't understand the Old Testament because Jesus in the book of Revelation, we're not going to turn there, but I hope that you already have in the book of Revelation 1 and 12, the Bible says Jesus is speaking to the church and we are the church and he's coming out of the candlesticks. He talks about the seven lampstands, you know, and so you see Jesus, the son of God, the son of man coming out, coming in the midst. It's imagery of how it's through the Holy Spirit and how we are, you know, uh, called, we are chosen. We are that lampstand, if you will. And we'll find that if you look in the book of Revelation, how Jesus speaks to us through the spirit, through those candlesticks or through the, the lampstands as revelations, or it depends on what translation that you have. So it's imperative to be able to have that understanding because there in the book of Revelation, Jesus is saying, whoever has an ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying to the churches. And we read there where he is given revelation and understanding, just like Paul wrote that letter to the Romans. Romans, you know, those letters went to the church of Philadelphia and Ephesus and Laodicea, you know, they were shared. So the Holy Spirit through the, you know, uh, you know, a disciple John was speaking as uh, Jesus was giving them revelation of uh, what needs to be addressed in the church. And that's what we need to hear today. That's what you need to hear and I need to hear. Not what CNN is saying or Fox News is saying or all of the others. We need to hear what the Spirit is saying. Yes. Can we amen. say amen and amen, amen and amen? amen? What is the Holy Spirit saying to you? What, what's the Holy Spirit saying to me? And so that's what's imperative. And again, if you're so focused upon all of this other garbage and all of this other stuff, we're going to miss it. We're going to miss it because we're not going to hear we're so concentrated and focused and worried and scared and afraid and angry and all of these emotions, you know, is going to cause us to miss the goodness and the sweetness of God. See, last week, if you remember, those flies would buzz around when they got burnt. They fell into the oil. The uh, fly began to burn and you'd smell dead flesh. So it would stink up the place. And I'm telling you what, when you let the devil on the inside, he'll stink up your life. He'll stink up your mind. He'll stink up everything. There'll be a stink. And when you are stinked up, you're going to cause other people to be stunk up. Can we say amen? <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, I'm not a skunk. But yet, we know that the Holy Spirit, that's why we said the fire has to keep burning. The fire has to keep burning. It's the fire of the Holy Spirit that has to keep burning in your life and in my life as we would see that imagery and understand that the oil has to be uh, maintained. The oil has to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, continued to, to minister as the, the, uh, the priest would have to pour fresh oil, pour fresh oil. Well, how many of you know it's the great high priest, the Lord Jesus, who sent the Holy Spirit? Amen. You know, that he pours out. Everybody say pours out. He pours out his presence and his power, you know, in, in the midst of your life and in my life. And so we know that when Jesus ascended, he sent the Holy Spirit. You know, he, he sent the Holy Spirit. He says, listen, there's so much more for you to know. There's so much more for you to learn. But I'm going to send my Holy Spirit. My Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. I'm going to send my spirit. We know that Jesus is uh, at the right hand of the Father. Amen? Amen? And we know that Jesus says, this is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. We read that in the book of John. Right? Amen? And the Bible says that the Spirit of God came upon a Jesus. Can we say amen? Like in the form, like in the form of doves. We see the Father. We see the Son. We see the Holy Spirit. Then when Jesus ascended to heaven, he said, I'm going to send my spirit. 
I spoke last week about the day of Pentecost and when he sent the Holy Spirit. And now they, uh, the Holy Spirit rested upon them. And the Bible says that cloven tongues just as fire, cloven tongues just as fire, fell upon them and they began to speak in other tongues as what? The Spirit gave them utterance. So people are so focused upon the tongues. That's not what the important message is. It's they was filled with the Holy Spirit and changed their language. And they begin to speak with the new tongue. Amen. 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 And so they prophesied and people stood back and said, what has happened to these people? And so there's a notable change. There's a notable change. But it was through the power, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Again, we rejoice over the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can we say amen? amen? We rejoice over the cross and the grace that he has given us. But Jesus died. He rose again. He's at the right hand of the Father. He's making intercession. But he sent the Holy Spirit. So you and I, we need to be depending upon the Holy Spirit. Can we say amen? amen. Totally depending upon the Holy Spirit. So the born-again Christian is desiring to never to be, uh, never to yield to the carnal nature, but to the Holy Spirit. And we find that within us, when we're born again, there's that war within us. Because as we read in the, in the Bible that here we're still in this world, we're not of this world, but yet now the Holy Spirit is living in us and we're having this struggle. Am I the only one that's having this struggle? We, we have this struggle, it's the struggle within. It's, it's are we going to yield to the natural man or the carnal man, or are we going to yield to the Holy Spirit? And now the Holy Spirit was sent to be able to help us, to train us, to teach us, and to help us to be able to come to know who he is and, and who we are in him. How many of you are happy that the Holy Spirit dwells in you? Can we put our hands together and say amen? But we find if we turn over, if we turn over to um, Galatians 5, uh, 16 through 25, we find the, the characteristics of the flesh and the characteristics of the Holy Spirit. And if you want to turn over there to Galatians chapter 5, 16, you'll notice the same theme that we just read in Romans, the same theme in which Paul was sharing with the Romans. Now he's speaking to the Galatians. But he says this. Um, I say then, walk in the spirit that you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And the flesh lust against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. So that you do not do the things that, that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now listen. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, disseminations, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, robbery, revelings, and the like. Of which I tell you before, just as I've told you in times past, that those who practice such things will not enter into the kingdom of God. Okay? So now he's identifying what the natural man does. You and I, can we say amen? amen. The natural man. How many of you know that that's who we were before we were saved? That's our characteristics. We're all, you know, guilty. That's one of the things that everybody has in common, sin. Your sin is uh, no bigger than my sin. Sin is sin. And the wages of sin is death. But then it, it identifies the work of the flesh. So you can identify when these things are happening in you, when they're happening in me, yes, they have support. Your flesh has support by the devil. The devil, what he does is cheer you on. <laughs> you go do it. There's the sin. And when you make that choice, the devil is right there to tempt you and say, you keep going. But yet there's the characteristics of the, the natural man or the carnal man and, and, and these things. But yet we see the contrast. But the fruit of the Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit dwelling in you and I, okay? That's the Holy Spirit dwelling in you and I is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, 
goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. And so here we find, you know, the contrast that, and the war, uh, the opposition that goes on in every believer, whether it's the youngest or the oldest. You know, it doesn't matter what age we are. You know, I'm reminded of the woman who was sitting in church and had an unruly child, and the child, uh, you know, just continued to misbehave. And mama looked at that child and said, you better behave or I'm going to jerk a knot in your mm. Well, she behaved. But later on, she said, Mama, I might have, <clears throat> I might have been misbehaving on the outside, but uh, I might have been behaving on the outside, but on the inside, I was calling you every name in the book. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the war within, the war within. And you all face it, and we all face it. And so, therefore, that's what the Lord is trying to help us with. So, but Jesus has set us free from the works of the flesh. Can we say amen? amen? You know, he is the one. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the work of the Spirit. Depending. Everybody say depending totally on the Holy Spirit. Amen. Totally the Holy Spirit. Many times people are trying to break bad habits. They're saying, and I'm not going to do this again. How many of you have made promises to God and say, I'm never going to do that again just to turn around and do it again? The rest of you lie because you know you did it too. <laughs> never going to do it again, and you do it. Why? Because you can't will yourself not to do particular things. It might work for a while. But when you're totally dependent upon the Holy Spirit, yes, you need to have that desire, number one. I don't want to do it. But it's the Holy Spirit. It's focused upon the Holy Spirit. Amen? If your focus is upon that vice or that thing that is controlling you, it's going to get stronger. I said it's going to strong, be a lot stronger. Yes. If you're dealing with lust many times and all you, you're saying, I can't lust, I can't lust. You know, i got to put you know, uh, blinders on and all of this stuff. And, oh, God, I'm dealing with lust. Well, that lust is going to become stronger and stronger. But if you get focused on the Holy Spirit and say, oh, Holy Spirit, you know, I need you. Flow through me. Let my focus, let my desires, you know, be in you. See, it's not the keeping of the law because the law condemns. And that's what Paul was speaking. He was speaking to the Jews that was under the law, but us also Gentiles. But yet, the strength of sin is the law. And the law condemns, okay? Thou shalt not. You've done it. You're guilty. It condemns you. But Jesus came in the law of, uh, to free you from the law of sin and death. And so it's the power of the Holy Spirit that totally, totally dependent upon the Holy Spirit to help you, to keep you, to encourage you, and that you are able to overcome through the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So for us to walk upright, our righteousness is not in our specific acts, but our righteousness is in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is my righteous. I'm trying to be righteous, but I fall short every day. So do you. Your righteousness is in Christ. He who knew no sin became sin that the righteousness of God might come upon us. So we identify with Christ. We identify he is the one who was nailed to the cross, sinful flesh, our sin, our shame, our iniquity. Everything was nailed upon him. And now our faith in his atonement, faith in his blood. When we have faith in him, then that's where our righteousness comes from. And it's our faith. Everybody say it's your faith. It's your faith in him through the power of the Holy Spirit working and helping you to overcome. And that's where Paul says you are an overcomer. Amen. Amen. By the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, give him praise and glory and honor. Amen. That's our righteousness. But see, the enemy is constantly trying to drag you back and, and tell you lies and deceive you. But I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is here to help you and guide you and direct us. And uh, he'll do things for us. And I, this, doesn't, this is not an exhaustive list. But number one, the Holy Spirit will convict you, not condemn you yes. of your sin. Yes. He'll convict you, but he won't condemn you. There's a big difference. 
You know, when he begins to convict you, it's a loving way. He said, listen, Joe, that's not the way. <laughs> that is not what you need to be thinking about. That is not what you need to be doing. And he knows how to convict us. The enemy condemns you. You're a worm. You're useless. You're never going to make it. God it does not like you. Your name, even, your name is not even written in that book. And there's a condemnation. You need to be able to discern between the two. Yes. The works of the flesh, the lies of the devil through the Holy Spirit. And I'm so glad that the Holy Spirit convicts me of my sin. Yes. You couldn't live with me. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit. Matter of fact, he convicts us for our good. Can we say amen? amen. The Holy Spirit will draw you to the word of God. He is the one. You probably had no desire for the word of God. But when you become born again, it's the Holy Spirit says, listen, dust off that Bible. Pick it up. Pick it up. It's the Holy Spirit that draws you, draws you to be able to read the word of God. He is the one who gives us that appetite for yes. the word of God. Yes. So we say many times, oh, I need to read the Bible more. Well, I want to tell you it's the Holy Spirit that gives you the appetite. I hear some people say, oh, I'm going through a dry season. We all go through the dry seasons. Can we say yeah, amen? amen? But you pray and say, Lord Jesus, help me. Holy Spirit, give me an appetite for God's word. We need to have an appetite for God's word. Can we say amen? amen? I believe that there needs to be conviction in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? amen. And I believe there needs to be a greater appetite for the word of God. Yeah. Can I get an amen? amen? That he draws us. He draws us. You know, to the word of God. And as I uh, share with you, he, the Holy Spirit, will interpret the word of God for you. As we've said many times, I don't understand this, Pastor Joe. Well, the Holy Spirit is the one who will give you the interpretation and proper interpretation. Yeah, yeah. You know, I knew a guy that I worked with years ago. and He went to Bible college and uh, he wasn't born again. And he went to a school of theology, and he knew the Bible as far as chapter and verse, but the boy was so dumb, he didn't even understand what he knew and what he was reading. And we used to get into those wonderful fellowship conversations, Charles. <laughs> you know, I'd say, wait a minute, Bo, you know all of this. You've learned a whole lot, but you're still ignorant of the whole theme of the Bible. And, and so you can know the Bible, but without the Holy Spirit, he begins to interpret. He yes. begins to show yes. you. He gives you revelation. He gives you revelation. The Holy Spirit is the teacher. Jesus said that I'm going to send the teacher, right? The, the teacher. He said that I'm going to send the teacher. Who's the teacher? The Holy Spirit. If, if you learn anything from me, it's not me. It's the Holy Spirit that is flowing through me. And that's how it works in the body of Christ. That we all teach one another through the Holy Spirit. Can we say amen? amen? But who gets the glory? Not man, not me. It's the Holy Spirit that is teaching us, that's showing us and open up our eyes. Can we say amen? amen? And so we need the proper interpretation. That's why we have so many denominations. That's why we have so many different religions. It's because, listen, the Holy Spirit does not bring confusion. He's not divided. He's not going to speak one thing to you and me. You know, I'm, he, we may have gift, different gifts and talents, but yet the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit. And I'm so glad that he's pure and he's holy and he's full of truth. Matter of fact, Jesus says when the Spirit comes, he's going to teach you and lead you to all true and don't we need truth this day and time instead of all of the lies see satan is the total opposite and even your flesh you know is, is so deceiving many times but that's what the holy spirit does and he will show you how to properly apply the word of god to your life and my life how do we read where we have it now lord show me you know there's a song that we used to Sing, show me your ways. You know, from Hillsong, show me your ways that I may walk with you. How do I apply this word to my life? And so when you're reading, you're asking the Holy Spirit to teach you, but then the Holy Spirit will help you to apply it to your life, that we may grow and be his disciples, less of the flesh and more of uh, Christ living in us. Can we say amen? amen? He is called the Spirit of Christ that lives in us. And so we see that 
Uh, that's what he desires to do. You know, I, I, we're praying for a piano player. Can we say amen? How many of you is joining with me playing for the piano player? Is it you? Are you being disobedient? I don't know. Holy Spirit, get him. But I don't know who. But this piano, it's got wonderful keys in here. See, see, you know, they're not prejudiced. It's white and black right there, right beside one another, and they ain't have no problems, amen? We've got a spiritual piano right up here. But you know what? They're up there together. It's a beautiful piece of equipment, instrument, but it does no good without a piano player. It just sits there, collects dust, you know. But if there's a skilled pianist, if there's a skilled pianist that gets up on here and begins to play, then now it's serving its purpose, right? And when they're skilled and they're good, it is so beautiful. And that's like our lives many times, you know. We can, we can live our lives, but without the skill of the Holy Spirit flowing through our lives, you know, we're going to stink if we don't have the Holy Spirit flowing through our lives and making us pure and holy and righteous. How many of you know that God wants beautiful music to flow out of us? Can we say amen? amen. And without the Holy Spirit. Listen, without the Holy Spirit or not dependent upon the Holy Spirit, we are of no use. We've got to totally depend upon the Holy Spirit in every area of our lives. Can I get an amen and amen and amen? You know, and so we find that, you know, it's the Spirit of God which works and moves in your heart and in my heart, your life. It's all about yielding and depending, yielding and depending upon every area of your life that we're so dependent. You know, we've, we've mentioned these illustration as a little baby is so dependent upon mama, right? See, the little baby needs mama. So dependent, it's not going to survive. You and I need to see that we need to be so dependent upon the Holy Spirit, just like that little baby. We are living in a day and an age that we have to be dependent upon the Holy Spirit. Amen. And that baby is looking to mama and, you know, to be able to take care. And that mama, if she's a good mama, she's going to love that baby and she's going to take care of that baby and she's going to change that baby's diaper and going to put that you know, milk in that baby. She's that. She's going to lay that baby down. She's going to rock that baby. And she's going to beat that baby too when that baby needs beat. But anyway, that's a part of love too. People don't want to talk about it. But anyway, you know, that's where the baby is so dependent. Yes. And you and I, here's what the Lord is saying to you and I. During this day and hour, I don't know what's going to happen in your job. I don't know what's going to happen in your finances. I don't know what's going to happen in your health. I don't know what's going to happen in the United States of America. And I don't know what's going to happen around the world other than what the Word of God says is going to happen. But I do know that the greater one lives inside of you. And I know that he is the one that is able to help you and to keep you and provide for you and do. surrender my life lord i'm going to depend on you yes. and it's hard for you and i to do that and why we don't do that that's the works of the flesh yeah. there's pride that we got to deal with mm -hmm. I'm, I'm telling you there's pride pride we got to deal with it worldly possessions we got to deal with it because yeah. we don't want to let go of some of the stuff can we say amen and I want to remind you that everything here is temporary. I'm temporary. You're temporary. This building is temporary. You know, 200 years from now, I don't think this building is going to be here. Of course, it is built upon a rock. I'm not sure. But anyway, you know, things change. Everything's temporary. Yes. And so it is so hard to be able to totally depend upon the Holy Spirit. He is your Savior. He is your provider. He is your provider. He's the one said, I'm going to provide what you need. Yeah. 
And so we don't need to have all of our faith and all of our worry and fear in what we can do. Can we? Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? Totally dependent. Some people live based upon the stock market. If it goes up or down, or your retirement up and down, or your job up and down. How many of you know that God's kingdom don't go up and down and up and down? His word's the same today and yesterday and all eternity. It's totally dependent. See, the, the Holy Spirit is the author of the word of God. And God has given us a great gift. He's given us gift of faith, and he's given us the word of God. And so our faith is in what he said that he would do. So our issue is not trusting. We need to totally trust in the Lord. Can we say amen? amen. Put our trust in him. And there's that battle or that war. God, and that's where we short circuit many times. Am I the only one? You know, and so that's the battle. They're, they're contrary to one another. We're saying, Holy Spirit, oh, God, help us. That's why we need to keep the fire burning. That's why we need to continue to allow the Holy Spirit to teach us, to train us, to help us. How many of you know there's fullness of joy in his presence? Amen. Hello? Yeah. And joy. Joy in the midst of whatever situation. We find Paul, you know, as examples in the scripture, him, you know, was, you know, he and his buddy, you know, was in the Philippian prison and, and they were beaten and, and they were thrown in the prison. They were uh, unjustly beaten and thrown into the prison. But yet the Bible says that Paul and Silas, they begin to what? They begin to pray and they begin to praise. How many of you know that that's the work of the Holy Spirit in them? You know, we credit them for these scriptures, but it's the Holy Spirit working in them. You know, were they suffering for Christ? Absolutely. Did the Bible say we were going to suffer for Christ? Absolutely. But are you going to whine and complain and are you going to act, you know, do the works of the flesh? Are you going to walk in the spirit and say, no, God is with me. God is for me. You know, is it my time? Paul said to live as Christ, to die as gain. He knowed in whom he believed. See, that's the spirit. That's the spirit of the living God working in you. You know, we need to kind of let go of this world and we need to grab hold of heaven. Can we say amen and say, God, this is not my home. James says your life and my life is like a vapor. And it's going to vanish. But yet there's things that is eternal. Love the song again. My name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? You know, and so walking in the spirit is so important. Uh, praise team, can you come up here? You know, Isaiah. Isaiah 61 it's a, a prophecy that was fulfilled in Luke chapter 4. But it says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Talking about when Jesus came upon this earth. And what was the spirit's, uh, uh, you know, characteristics? Because the Lord has anointed me. Again, that's the words of the Holy Spirit. To preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. How many of you know that many times we're going to face with things that's going to break our hearts? Amen. Some of the things that you're seeing now, it'll break your heart. But the Holy Spirit is the one who heals your heart. You know, the Bible tells us that, you know, not only does he heal the brokenhearted, but uh, proclaims liberty to the captive. You know, and what is he talking about? Liberty to the captive. Are we behind bars? No. You're captive to the flesh. You're captive to this world. You're captive to the things of this world. No, Jesus, who the sin sets free, is, you know, is free indeed. He sets you free. You know, he opens up the, the, the blinded eyes, the Bible says, and he, he, he makes a way where there seems to be no way. In other words, sin bounds you. The flesh bounds you. But he broke the curse of sin. He broke the curse of death. He broke that curse that we may have life and life eternal through the Holy Spirit. Oh, God, we need to give him praise and glory and honor in this place today. Hallelujah. And so we need to depend upon the Holy Spirit. We need to trust in the Holy Spirit. Listen, we need to trust him. How many of you have a good friend that you can trust? Has anybody got a good friend? That you to, you're able to discuss whatever? Hello? I mean, don't tell preacher Joe this. Don't tell Pastor Joe this, but 
and you got confidence that they're not going to run to me and tell me, hello? Hey, the Holy Spirit speaks. I oh, mean, he knows. I know something. No, I'm just kidding. But anyway, you need a good friend. You know, you think that I'm, you know, um, going to think that people won't, don't talk about me. <laughs> Obviously, I talk about myself. I call myself stupid and you idiot and all this stuff. So, and, you know, I know other people are going to, but the point is you need to have a good friend. A good friend. You can depend upon that friend. Do you have a friend that when you call, they're going to listen to you? Yes. You know, you, 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 I mean, you can share. Man, I'm just going through a bad day. How many of you go through bad days and you just call that friend? Hello? And you depend upon that friend. You know, if you need something, you call that friend and that friend's there. I, I, I'm calling that a good friend. You know, they say most men don't have a good friend like that. That's sad, isn't it? A lot of you women, y'all are more relational. Y'all have more good friends. But some men, they're too prideful to be able to pick up the phone and say, hey, that's another sermon. But yet, you need to have a good friend. But I'm telling you what, you need to become best friends with the Holy Spirit. Amen. You need to become best friends with the Holy Spirit. How many of you know he knows before you even begin to talk? How many of you know he knows your heart before? <laughs> he can discern and he can decipher your heart. Some of you women, I can't figure it out. But I know the Lord <laughs> has put the Holy Spirit to figure y'all out. I understand that we've got left brain and right brain and all of that stuff and no brains. But yet, the Holy Spirit knows exactly what's going on in your brain. Why? He created you. He knows you. The Spirit searches the mind and the heart. You need to become best friends with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says it's a wonderful counselor. See, your best friend may die. Your best friend may move away. Your best friend may leave. The Holy Spirit, he said that I'll never leave you nor forsake you. See, we need to totally depend upon the Holy Spirit. And that's what the Lord is saying for his church this day and time. Listen, it's getting dark. There's a lot of shaking going on. There's a lot of trouble. A lot of people, they're just, they live every day that a political victory happens. Get over it. Get over it. Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and He rules and reigns forever. Lord, He lifts up nations, He puts down nations. He is sovereign. You need to know that He is sovereign. He and He alone. So that sovereignty and His Lordship, where? It's the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. I'm going to depend upon Him. I'm not going to yield to the flesh. I'm not going to let the devil and this flesh take me down this road of depression. Are you with me? No, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to have to say sometimes, flesh, line up. How many of you know you need to talk to yourself sometimes? And you need to talk to the devil. The devil, get out of my face. Get out of my life. I know who you are. I know where you're going, and I'm not going there. There's going to be an angel that's going to come. One angel is going to chain you, buddy. You're going to live in a lake of fire for all eternity. You and all of your little imps. The Bible says it's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. And he's going to rule. I said he's going to rule for all eternity. I mean, we need to be able to know who we are, whose we are. But we need to allow the Holy Spirit. We need to obey the Holy Spirit. And we need to minister to the Holy Spirit. Can we say amen? You know, all of us, I think everybody, if you don't have a GPS on your phone, something's wrong with you. I think everybody has GPS. And so we're so dependent this day and time, not very many people carry a map. Could be a mistake. Some of you don't. Most of you do. But we're so dependent, we need to allow God to be our GPS. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to lead us. Can we say amen? amen? See, we're living in perilous times. We're living in times that we don't know what's going to happen. But I'm telling you what, God, I'm telling you, God is great. <laughs> I'm telling you, the presence and the power that we feel here today, we can feel for all eternity. But I'm telling you what, when we get out of this flesh, there's going to be some shouting and singing that's far beyond what we understand. Amen. amen.
while we look not at the things that are seen, but look at the things that are unseen. Because the things that are seen are temporary, but the things that are not seen are eternal. You know, the Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The Bible says, yeah, you are more than a conqueror through who? Jesus Christ, your Lord. How many of you know that we're able to conquer things and, and we're able to overcome things through the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit? And if you believe that, can you just stand today and just give him praise? Can you just stand and give him praise? Give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. so dependent. I'm so trusting. Am I speaking the right message? I don't know. It's by faith. God, help me depend upon you. Likewise, with all of us, you got to depend upon the Lord. And if you're here today and you don't know the Lord, I'm not going to ask you. You need to come. You need to come and you need to have that assurance that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You need to know that you are going to die one day. And well, based upon everything that we're here, you just never know have that assurance. Isn't it awesome to be able to know, you know, that you know Jesus is your Lord and Savior. We did Shorty's funeral this week and, uh, I, you know, from the time that he was diagnosed, three weeks later he was gone. Is that right, Benny? But they asked me to come to the hospital and I know Shorty was a wonderful man. Uh, need to continue to pray for Kathy and the whole family. But the first thing that I did when I went up there, I said, Shorty, listen, I need to know I said, I need to know, do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? And without any hesitation, and Kathy to his side, he said, yes, Jesus is my Lord and Savior. And I told Shorty, I said, if he is your Lord and Savior, you're already up. You, we're good to go. Whichever way this thing turns, where you go on, you know, you're going to go before me. You're going to go where I want to go. But, you know, he is a healer and he does miracles. Can we say amen? But yet he had that assurance. And so when I'm preaching a funeral, oh, God, thank you that I'm able to share stories like that. But can I share that about you? Sitting in a church, don't get it. It, it, it don't get it. You got to make that commitment. You say, Lord, I need you. I need you. I need a change of heart. So if you've never received Jesus, that's the greatest gift that God wants to give you today. And if you're here today, Pastor Joe, I know that my name's written in that book. But I'm, I'm struggling. <laughs> and you're not alone. Lord, I need to be led of the Spirit. I need to depend upon the Holy Spirit. And if that's your request, I'm just going to ask you to come and say, God, you know, help me. Lord, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. But not only filled with the Holy Spirit, I want to be led of the Holy Spirit. I want to have the right attitude. How many of you know the Holy Spirit gives attitude adjustments? I need to have the right attitude. God, you got to work on my mind. Lord, my attitude determines my actions. I need to have the right attitude. And I need to have the right actions. How many of you know, hey, we're living in this flesh suit. We need them to be upon the Holy Spirit. Amen. You just pray and say, Lord, help me. Help me. How many of you believe that this thing, we need to have cloven tongues of fire again? <laughs> How many of you believe we need to allow the Holy Spirit to speak through this thing and not the flesh? Hello? Amen. We hear a lot of it. Can we say amen? amen? And so I just want to encourage us all. I include myself in every prayer. God, help me. Help your pastor. Pray for me. I don't want to walk in the flesh. I want to walk in the spirit. I don't want to minister in the flesh. I want to minister in the spirit. I want the Holy Spirit to teach me. There's so much that I need to learn. So much. And all of us have a lot to learn. So I just want to encourage you to come and say, Lord, here I am. And we're just crying out. We're crying for the revival that happened. We're crying for the supernatural power. But yet, oh God, help me. The Bible tells us here that we need to crucify this flesh through Christ. And what that is, God, I'm going to walk in you. I'm going to trust in you. Less of me, more of you. So can we pray this morning? Would you come to this altar and just say, God, here I am.